Yeah, a, a little bit of bad news, though, and, and uh, just, you know, as we've talked about a few other things, you know, Joe's going to fall asleep. <laughs> I think Tim's head is going to blow up. Uh, uh, today, my kids uh, yeah. had their, their their elementary school had a big um, a picnic. So it's, a, you know, it's a Catholic school, too. So um, there was free beer and uh, you know, I've already been drinking. A little bit. You look kind of red. <laughs> Are you in the sun today a lot? Uh, no, it was raining for most of the time I was outside. Uh, okay. So I, it might be, I don't know, radiation poisoning. <laughs> Maybe. Radon in your basement or something? No. No, I'm not. <laughs> well, that's good. So you got a head start. You're yeah. pre-gaming. You're pre-gaming at your kid's school. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I was talking to one of the other wives. I'm just like, oh man, geez. And we're like, like, she's just like, I can't believe this is so awesome that we're walking into the school with beers in her hand. But <laughs> yeah, I did not expect to ever do that. But hey. Catholic school nonetheless. Yeah, no kidding. All right. Should be drinking wine though. Yeah, well, I figured that the priest was probably <laughs> knocking back some whiskey, you know. <laughs> Well, Joe and I saw Mr. Bungle the other night, and uh, possibly one of the worst bands we've ever seen open up for them, which I think, it, as, a, as a rule, Mr. Bungle just picks bands that just suck to open for them. And I think Mike Good Patton, chance. Joe was saying this, <laughs> he's like, Mike Patton is the biggest fucking troll ever. He's just trolling his fans mm-hmm. every time. Because, this because band they, didn't was, play, they didn't play anything. Well, they played one good song. I mean. What, what so, Mr. Bungle did? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I disagree with that. I don't. I, th- I think they. Well, they did. They did a Spando ballet cover, which was good. Also, I don't hate yeah. the new album. I just think it's not that great. But I don't. I didn't like. For me, walking out of that concert, it was like it was cool to see Scott Ian and Dave Lombardo is always great to watch on drums. So I, and their lead guitar player is really good too. So like, I enjoyed myself. Um, it wasn't the like, yeah, I, and probably because I had an expectation going in that I know how mr bungle goes and this iteration of mr bungle is like pure like thrash metal right it's like Mm -hmm. (laughs) stuff they wrote in 86 which is basically thrash metal and that's basically Mm. you know they have scotty in the band and they have dave lombardo so they're probably not going to play a lot of stuff from the first album which they didn't they played one song and it wasn't even the full song it was like three minutes of that song um (laughs) so it it wasn't the girls of porn or no it was uh, uh uh my ass is on fire Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they, <laughs> they closed so what, with the uh, Pepto Bismol theme, which was pretty funny. But it was like five <laughs> seconds. Oops, I, think, was, like, I think if people are coming to see Mr. Bungle, you should fucking play the good stuff. Like, at least some of it. No, I know. I know. So, I just remember I saw them in 95 when they were touring on Disco Volante, and mm-hmm. they didn't play anything off the first. Well, no, they played Travolta off the first album, and that was it, I think. Yeah. So and they played everything on the new album and some weird covers, very much like this tour. So like, it didn't surprise me. So I guess I knew going in what to expect. So I wasn't pissed off leaving like Joe was. <laughs> um, but the big story here is like so. Okay, so we get there. We got there like right as doors open at seven, right? So we got a really sweet spot on the balcony. So we go up to the balcony and it's me, Joe, and our friend Sean. And so it's Sean on the end, then Joe, and then me. And we're just, you know, we're standing there and the opening band plays and we were sitting through that shit. And uh, in between the bands, like Joe walks off to get another drink. The bar and was so, right, like right behind us too. So yeah. I, it wasn't like I went far. So, and also keep in mind, so so where I was standing, there was like this big giant fucking pole, but it was, there was a space between the pole and the balcony. So I could stand kind of like shoved in between this pole and the balcony. So I was kind of squeezed into this spot, right? It wasn't uncomfortable or anything. It was just like it kind of worked out because when Joe left, I could move out of that space and spread out a little bit and save Joe's spot. Mm-hmm. And so we did that. Or you thought you could. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought I could, and I thought that wouldn't be a problem. But so me and Sean are just kind of standing there. You know, we spread out a little bit, you know, like we had our legs spread a little bit. And all of a sudden, this this girl who had been kind of behind Sean like had squeezed her way in next to Sean. And out of nowhere, she's like, you're really in my personal space right now. Oh my God. And Sean's like, uh, what? <laughs> and she's like, look at you, you're man spreading. Oh my God. 
<laughs> and wow. we were both Sean and I looked at each other like I don't know what that means. Like we, we literally said that out loud. Like I don't we, I, I don't know what that means. She's like, Oh, you know what it means. <laughs> I'm like, I'm I'm seriously, I don't know what it means. And I was starting to get I was like, We're literally saving a spot for our friend. She's like, Fuck your friend. He can fend for Whoa. himself. And I'm like, Oh, so saving a spot is not something that's common, like something people have done for decades. Like that's something weird that happens, especially a spot that he was just standing in. Right? Yeah, she, she saw. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah. So that was that was fun, um, and of course, like all. So, I think Joe, you made your way back in, right? Mm-hmm. Eventually, yeah. And yeah, I saw what she was doing to Sean. Yeah, just like flipping her hair in his face. Oh my god! Had her her big stinky armpit running right up in his face. Yeah, but rubbing her disgusting sweaty arm all over him and like <sighs> like fun so she was starting though, to get what i get we can say like sean's got covid now so hopefully she got covid from him oh, <laughs> yeah i i thankfully i did not get it it seems like if you go to baltimore you're gonna get covid though because that's i got covid last year and i got from going to a concert in baltimore so i don't think i got it they're sold out of tests yeah, oh really yeah that's, i can't believe they're sold out of tests everywhere yeah, wow that's crazy because it's making a resurgence so that's what the media says. <laughs> well, I tested the, negative. The, so. the test makers want you to believe. Well, also, Sean had never gotten it, so this was his first. So It's a big, it's a big important moment for him. He had no immunity. <laughs> so Joe and yeah. I have both had it. So, But yeah, that was that was fun. <laughs> God. The fucking bitch. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. God, I had the exact opposite uh, experience at the show I went to on Wednesday. Which was not a metal show by any means, so that's probably why. <laughs> I was going to say that different audience for sure. <laughs> what show that was, was such that? a that was Death Cab for Cutie and Postal Yo. Service. Yeah, is that at Merriweather or no? I was at the Anthem. Anthem, right. in DC. Really good show, but uh, but you were probably sitting nice, the whole time too, weren't you? We were sitting, but you know, people had to come in. They'd be, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, and they'd walk past us like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, so sorry, I have to get past you. I'm sorry. Excuse me, please, excuse me. <laughs> I was like, all right. But you also had seats. That's different. Yeah, we had seats. That's true. <laughs> So. But it was such a strange, like I'm so used to metal shows. I like I look down at the crowd and it's like people in colored shirts and like they're all like yeah. kind of preppy looking and everyone's so polite. I was like, this is weird, it's a strange experience. It's like, are you guys in line? Are you guys in line? I don't want to get, I don't want to cut in line. Like, no, we're not in line. Go ahead, it's okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was a good show. They they um, I never heard a crowd so quiet they play a song called transatlanticism and it's just this really mellow song you know when we go to shows there's like we saw like pride and glory and zach wilde's up there playing a piano and these fuckers all around us are like talking and they would not shut up yeah you're like would you guys shut up this guy's like playing playing a piano it's this nice ballad at this show it was like i swear i either heard like the hiss of the pa system or the ac hum like it was so (laughs) quiet because i sent you that clip back of the song yeah yeah that was a song he's just singing by himself with just like yeah, a yeah. tiny little backing track. I was like, holy shit, it's so quiet in here. Like, I could hear a pin drop. That was just, <laughs> it's just a wow. strange experience yeah. like at a concert, but pretty cool nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's Death Cat for Cutie. It's not going to be like right. a metal show. So, yeah. No. No. yeah. Kind of a selling band, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <sighs> They are. Well, anybody else have any stories to tell before we get started on this episode? Did we talk about seeing Gojira and Mastodon? No, we didn't. It's been a while since we recorded, so yeah. Yeah, that was in August. That's right. Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah, and oh, let's not forget Lorna Shore. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't oh. talk about this? I don't think so, no. I don't think oh, we did. Okay. We texted about it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we, well, we were talking to each other in person. Have you heard of Lorna Shore, Keith? No. Oh, boy. Should You're I be better off? It? I want to like listen to it just so I can hate listen to it, but I don't want them to get my money because I know they get like a percentage of a percentage of a penny. Yeah, so. But nevertheless, I don't want to give them any money. <laughs> <laughs> what if I play it on YouTube? Does that matter? Do they um, yeah, yeah, yeah they still get something. Oh, really? Well, we might have to just... Make sure yeah, you get the you gotta get the new singer too. I'm sure the other ones are equally horrible. This is the most recent album. Sure. <laughs> 
That's enough. That's enough. Sure, yeah, that's it, real drumming. Uh, right. Yeah, it, it, I mean that 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 right there is is kind of death industrial goth. I mean, it's uh, I, and honestly, I would probably dig that if they actually got somebody that could do vocals correctly. Yeah, and the weird I thing mean, too is when I like, mean, I, when he addressed the crowd, he sounded like a radio DJ. Yeah, he's, he's like, cool. yeah, yeah, it's like the show tonight, guys. How's it going? <laughs> this is the what best the town we've played best, for. Best show ever, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, oh. best show ever. We're rock sure. and roll, guys. Rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> like this is so bad. But What's I think it, it might have been that song where he just start, it just starts off with his. Singing oh, they all sound the same. But yeah. but there's remember the one that I think it was what you just played. But he just uh, he just no starts idea. doing that voice, and it's like, aren't you embarrassed? Like, <laughs> and and people are clapping, and you're like. What the no. fuck? Is, it was kind of like the opening band the other night. Yeah, yeah. like people are cla- people are enjoying. Fuck you. So we didn't, we didn't say the name of that band that opened for Miss Rumble. I can't remember. Battles. Now. Battles. That's right. They were terrible. Oh. All right. So so who is Lorna Shore opening for? That was Gojira uh, and Mastodon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. yeah I, I would. I wish Gojira had headlined because I thought Mastodon. Um, we're not as I guess we're not as familiar with their back catalog. Yeah. As maybe we should be. Yeah, and while yeah, the stage show is cool, but it it, you don't see the band so much. You see a (laughs) lot of like shadows and imagery, and I don't think either band was lit very well. Mm -mm. Yeah, well, the duo at least was on, and it was still a little bit light outside when they started. So because it got dark as they were playing, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. um, When I saw that, when I saw that show in Baltimore, it was flip flopped. Yeah. So I guess they they go back and forth on who plays. They must. Yeah, because yeah. co-headline. I mean, but they both played about the same amount of time. So yeah, I think so. But I remember liking Mastodon better in Baltimore. Huh. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe maybe we just are old and we're tired by the end of the gig. And like <laughs> we were tired. Yeah. We, yeah. That was, that was, we were standing kind of in the back and the and the because this place was like there was a floor kind of and it was there's like a lawn and we were on the lawn basically, and we were on the way back of the lawn and there were we were actually by the bathrooms and there was like a ramp to the bathrooms and I was looking over there going that ramp looks pretty comfortable right now I'm gonna sit down. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking bathroom ramp. Oh, sorry, wheelchair. You know. No, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, there were other people I'm, sitting there. <laughs> I, like, I wouldn't have been the back hurts. <laughs> exactly. It's like, man, my fucking legs hurt. I'm old. We were walking. You're, you're in a wheelchair. You, you're not even tired. Come on, I'm gonna sit here. We walked like two miles, man. In Pittsburgh. We had to walk to a CVS <laughs> on the other side of a bridge. It's We're tired. Okay. Yeah. So you were in Pittsburgh. You're gonna walk across a bridge. One way or another, you're walking across a bridge. A lot of fucking bridges. It's like Chicago. No. I guess. I think there's a lot of bridges in Chicago. I don't think there's a lot of bridges in Chicago. I think there is. The Green River? Is that what it's called? I mean, there's the, there's the lake. A bridge. Is, the, yeah, I mean, it's the <laughs> lake that's like right next to it. No, that's not. Let's look this up. <laughs> Let's not get too into the weeds with how many. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, I've, I've spent like three days in Chicago <laughs> once. So, you know. Anyway, the show was good. Yeah, no, they good put, both, both bands put on a good show. Yeah. yeah. And there was a big Mastodon. Guy that came out, <laughs> yeah, that's dressed right. Up, dressed up, big monster guy. Kind of, yeah. Dressed up just, like Mastodon. No, he's like a one-eyed Cyclops looking dude, and he came out and they had, they had black light, so he's glowing. He just kind of walked out and like shook him a he little just bit. Stood like, there and did this. He's like this, <laughs> like that. bouncing up and down. Wait, wait. When Eddie kind of comes jam, out for right? Iron Maiden, it's like an event. It's like, yeah, yeah man, like Eddie's out there. Sword fighting and Bruce Dickinson shooting him. Mastodon's Mast- random creature that does not have the same. Well, he just kind of he, he bopped his head like he's yeah. enjoying yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I kind of I, I kind of dug it. They weren't fighting him, you know. They're no, fighting Eddie. It made me wonder how much, like, what their technology is. Maybe they don't have like the advanced. They're not there yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they have one guy that can barely walk out and like stilts, and he's like, "Okay, yeah. I'm gonna barely make. Okay, I can stand here for about they're thirty like, seconds, and I can do yeah. this. Bounce up and they're down. Level one of stage monster. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, gear like you get stilts and a yeah. paper mache outfit, and right. <laughs> like, later on, we'll upgrade you to like you know. Yeah, <laughs> but, but you know, ten years from now, a decade from now, they'll have Moby Dick like actually swimming right. across. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Chicago, there's 43 drawbridges Whoa. in the city, 20 of which are downtown. So, yeah, there's some fucking bridges there. I'd say it's more than Pittsburgh, probably. So let's uh, half an hour into this episode. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. We probably start talking music at some point. We got to warm up. Right. Come on, but yeah, warm this up is, our vocal cords. I listened to uh, several 
podcasts that refer to this as housekeeping. Oh, really? Housekeeping. Mm-hmm. What, just to get our notes housekeeping. out there? Housekeeping? And... You want me to you up? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what they were. Kind of. Oh. <laughs> 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 Oh, is that the uh, Washington Commanders that podcast refers to it as housekeeping? Oh, well. as does the Metal Up Your podcast. Washington Commanders do need to do a lot of housekeeping. So, well, they won. They, they did win. won. That would be in quotes. The offensive line looked like shit, but they won. <laughs> the defense won that game. Yeah, pretty much. I was watching Red Zone too, and there's a lot of teams that look terrible. I guess it's, it's a- week one. I mean, this yeah. is basically. This is the fourth preseason game. Essentially. I mean, <laughs> Cincinnati. What the fuck? I don't Jesus know what we're Christ. paying these guys for. Them. Yeah, know. Joe Burrow just got paid. He's the most, the high, most, you know, <laughs> yeah. he's the like, richest you, quarterback I'm I'm ever in history, and yeah, he like, fucking for, sucks today. Thanks for the money. I'm, I'm just gonna tank now. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> he does that though. He starts off cold. Like Albert that. Hainsworth. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> That's the biggest bust in history of the NFL. He was never gonna be good. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i just remember that play where he was he got knocked over and he just kind of like laid there he's like eh, yeah. yeah i mean he the play down. was still going on he just yeah he's like, like looking around he's like, I I just, he kinda, get fuck. Get up, get up. i'm gonna go home and count my millions who yeah. gives a shit getting up is hard <laughs> i'm fat <laughs> this guy totally he's albert haynes yeah met him at ihop wow he, how, congratulations <laughs> yeah. How yeah, much food did he eat? A lot. He had like <laughs> three bags of stuff. Oh my god! I didn't ask if that was just for him. I was like, I'm assuming that's for a bunch of people, but actually, probably yeah, just for know. him. He has to eat five thousand yeah. calories a day. So, you never know. Okay, should we get into this? We should we probably doing? first discuss what we're talking about. So this episode. Oh, so let's do this first. Welcome everybody. Welcome back oh, to oh yeah, Somewhere in Time podcast. Uh, somewhere in time podcast.com is where you find us online. Get to all of our socials there, our Facebooks, Instagram, X, not Twitter. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to say something that is going to shock you. I never check Twitter or X. All right. Yeah. Let's, like, let's get rid of it never. just to make uh, sure we're not affiliated with that fucking piece of shit ever. Seriously. <laughs> I should just delete that account. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're not using it. I know. We don't, don't really use it. it. I think the anyway. podcast, uh, I think Podbean does a they push. Do. Yeah. Yeah. It's every episode is like, and it's, it's some like, uh, it's a generic blanket statement. It's like, yeah, hear us discuss our latest on thrash metal or something. It's like, yeah, it's very generic. Yeah. It's very generic. Yeah, no, hear us discuss the latest on brand new music. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> we haven't changed it since 2018. So that tells you how important it is to us. Yeah. <laughs> it's the I same know. message. But you years. can get to all of our YouTube episodes, which we do actually update that. So yeah. You can see us on YouTube if you go to our website or just go to youtube.com slash somewhere in time podcast. Or stalk us in real I'm life. Check X right now. Let's see what we've been up to right. in there. While you're doing that, let me do some introductions. I'm Eric and Tim is here. Good evening. And Keith is here. Hello. He's not drunk yet, but he got a head start. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, you get some food in you at least, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I had a couple hamburgers. There you go. See, that Thank soaked it all up. You're fine. And Joe is here. Matt Riddle is trending. What happened with him? I don't know. See, who that is. Twitter's, yeah, Twitter's still viable. Oh, I'm sure people it's, still use it. it. I just it's not Twitter. I call it's, it Twitter. It doesn't make X doesn't make sense. If you still if you go to Twitter.com, it still takes you to the same fucking yeah, place. Of course. Yeah. I know that to edit one of your messages now, you gotta pay. So that's typical mm-hmm. Elon what? Musk shit right there. Oh my god! You need premium, it says. Yeah, I saw something about that the other day where I was. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because I had posted something. It was a fantasy football thing. I had posted something and I went to. I was like, oh, I I, I misspoke there. I went to edit it. And I was like, nope, you can't edit that. It's so yeah. stupid. Like that's something stupid. What the hell is we that? We need we need your stupidity in history. <laughs> right. Instead of if you don't want to look like an idiot, you got to pay us. <laughs> Call Twitter, Elon Musk cunt hole. <laughs> it's a good name for it yeah all right so this is going to be a two-part episode but it is our basically our new york new jersey 1993 new york versus new jersey yeah our, our who's got the better pizza I, I guess you could call it thrash i put my mouth on pizza yeah it's i mean 
It's mostly thrash. I, one... I mean, it's three thrash bands, but I don't know if I'd call... Typo Negative's not thrash. No, they're not thrash. No, Their but... former band were thrash all the way. Yes, yeah, so this what? album... Carnivore. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're talking about, just so we can set the record here, so uh, I hear Black by Overkill, uh, Something Wicked by Nuclear Assault, Bloody Kisses by Typo Negative, and Sound of White Noise by Anthrax. So, yeah, there's a big one here that we're going to discuss, spend a good amount of time on, and the other ones, we'll talk about them, but yeah. uh, those are definitely honorable mentions compared to the Anthrax album, so, but we figured, you know, they're all based out of New York, New Jersey, so uh, throw them all together in one So they're all friends, probably, maybe. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm about yeah. friends. Yeah, so, <laughs> what shall yeah, we start with? We want to go with okay, let's start with, let's start with Jersey. And in, in that, let's Overkill. go ahead and go with Overkill. Overkill, yeah, I agree actually, because I I think, yeah, not to not to show my hand, but I think that's the worst album on this list. Really, you're right. Yeah, I'm, I think so too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, the notes. album is. Allow me, allow me to start. Well, go ahead and do your, your. Yeah, the album's I Hear Black. We'll play a little bit of it to get started, and then we can dig into it. Um, I don't know. I'll play. How about the title track? Gotta get some vocals in here. There we go. All right. Well, we'll get into it more when we get to the tracks. But so yeah. this band is uh, same lineup from Horoscope. So it's um, no, Bobby. no, incorrect. Oh, Tom, different drummer. Yeah, different drummer. Different mm-hmm. drummer. Okay. Tim Mallory. Yeah, Bob. Yeah, Tim Mallory on drums. Start over. <laughs> well, Tim Mallory on drums. Uh, you just said. He'll fix that in editing. We'll do it live. <laughs> Rob Canavino on guitar, Merrick Gann on guitar, Dee Dee Verde on bass, and Bobby Blitz Ellsworth on vocals. And uh, produced by Alex Perry Ellis and Overkill. And the production sounds, it's, it sounds fucking terrible, this album. Oh, it's, it's pretty so brutal. Bad. Yeah. yeah. Bad. And what the hell yeah. happened? This was the first time they didn't have a green overkill logo, which should have been a warning right there. Yeah. <laughs> Covers Halloween looking. Yes, very it's much. True. So. Yeah. Orange and black. It's, it, it actually doesn't really even have Charlie on there, does it? No, there's some weird uh, demon thing. We thought it was in the background. I don't know what that mm. thing is. Yeah, it's like what some poorly drawn guy with a mustache or a demon. I don't know what it is. Yeah. If if uh, just so listeners know, if you buy the Overkill box set, mm-hmm. the, the Atlantic Years box set, you get this in the get this vinyl in the, the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Whether like you a, like it or not, you're, <laughs> you get it. You're paying for the other albums, yeah. and then they throw that one in. You're yeah. right. So, so we didn't like this a, album. I guess. Uh, <laughs> it has moments, but well, I, I'm I'm very curious to Keith's thoughts. Yeah, because... me, well, okay. Let's face it. There's been a running joke since we started this thing that like I am, I do not like Overkill. It's never been a fan. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But and then, like one of the thing that I dislike about them is really Bobby Blitz's vocals. I just never got into them. And I'll be honest, I'm not minding him like, <laughs> like you know listen to this album just like all right the king yeah. diamond situation yeah, yeah it is exactly 100 percent. and i mean and i mean i guess yeah i mean like i was going into this again you guys kind of settled the uh you know in preparation for this i had an expectation because of a certain eric and tim and joe talking yeah, about yeah. the album before i'd ever heard it mm-hmm. that this wasn't going to be something that i was going to you know be impressed by or really enjoy at all so i was going in expecting to hate it and i didn't hate it i mean it, it definitely wasn't like mind-blowing it wasn't it wasn't like all right man i gotta go 
buy this, but I definitely yeah. did not mind listening to it. You know, it was, well, that's a, it's not a terrible album. It's just boring. No. And it sounds like shit. That's my issue with it, Rose, mm-hmm. mostly. The, yeah, the production really takes the listening yeah. pleasure down several notches. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Especially knowing how good the last album sounded. Yeah. Yep. yep. Well, this, um, it's really only got one overkill worthy, I think, um, song, which is World of Hurt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's right, there's the last song. Got that one right. Yes. <laughs> there's a few songs that are. Yeah, the okay. riff in the last song is really good. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Just like just you. Like um, yep. Yeah. I don't even mind Shades of Gray. I know that's a weird one for them, but. Yeah. Uh, I hate the chorus hate the in that chorus song. So oh. Shades, Shades of Gray. Shades of Gray. Oh. I agree with how bad Shades of Gray is. The other one that I thought was like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> it's Undying. Like, oh, God. Uh, yeah, it's not so thing. bad. What? Well, why would you? Undying. Why would you do that, guys? Yeah, that's there, really there is a good part in the song, right? <laughs> Uh, there was one good part. Well, if we if we're going through the tracks, we can get to. Yeah, it. we don't need to go. Through, let's just yeah. I don't, on I don't, yeah, there's the tracks okay. that we need. If there's to a talk spot, about. just tell me where it is, and I'll play. It's, it. it's 421 in that song. It's really good. Right. It's kind of black album sound. Wait, which song? Undying. Undying. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's cool riff. Yeah, that riff's good. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean that's not bad. That part's cool. But you mentioned the Black Album. I was I was wondering if there was any influence. You know, we've talked a lot about this since '91. Yeah. A lot of bands were influenced by the change in you know change in direction. The um, album's I, literally I think, called yeah. "I Hear Black," so <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. It's a direct reference or not? But... I I think I there's definitely some that. influence here. Yeah. Well, this is, you of, know, that Shades of Grey is almost like, it's, it's almost like a ballad. I don't think they've yeah, done yeah, yeah. like a ballad ballad up to this mm-hmm. point, have they? Well, there, there was, they had, uh, yeah, on, on, uh, oh, they, yeah, on, um, Here's the Decay, decay had, a, the song, oh, right. Here's the Decay. The song, Here's the Decay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. It gets heavy, that. but yeah. Yeah. Um, far, far superior song than that. Yeah. So the, I, I guess in looking back, the thing for me that is, is most interesting is this, you had, um, one of their best albums in Horoscope. Yeah. And you had mm-hmm. this album. And then you have mm-hmm. one of their other best albums. In WFO. Yeah. Like, it doesn't make yeah. any sense. They just took a big old shit right in the middle of those two. So I was thinking yeah. about that. And I, I don't, I didn't dig into this. So I don't know if there's any truth to this, but I do know that when Rob Canavino and Merrick Gant joined the band, they already had a bunch of riffs from their other bands that they had brought. Oh, in. okay. So there was a bunch of material that they had been building up. And, you know, you think, you think about bands when their first album comes out, they have all this material that they can, put together right and so it was almost that case where they got these two new guys and they have all this material they can just spit out and then all of a sudden like oh that all that material is gone so you have to come up with brand new shit and it was only mm-hmm. what less than two years later this album came out from horoscope so it could have been a yeah. record a record company thing where they're like you need guys need to get that next album out and then just churn those records out right and so they just had to throw some shit together which you know we've heard other well, bands talk yeah. about so Gant is only listed as a songwriter on one song and Canavino on another song. Oh, okay. Huh. Well, <laughs> the two, of the, two of the better songs, it's Dreaming in Colombian and Just Like You. Okay. Those are both pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Dreaming in Colombia, though, that has a stupid fucking chant thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you're going to write a chant, make it so that the audience can do it. That's some weird, like, oh, 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 They were going for the Iron Maiden thing, but they just yeah. uh, didn't know they, how to like, do it. They didn't yeah, commit. <laughs> they like, failed drastically. And yeah. they, they could have. They could have just if they simplified it a lot more and 
you know, not, not made it a two part vocal. Yeah. I mean, what is that? Probably, ooh, ooh. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> it's like, like if they could have, that would have been probably badass live with an entire stage audience, like going, you know, doing that, but yeah. they fucked it up. Yeah, no, it's not good. I just remember when this album came out. So I didn't, first of all, I didn't know this album was coming out. I remember I, this is one of those weird, vivid memories I have from my teenage years. I, I woke up to go to school, grabbed my Walkman like I did every day. And I, I, I pushed, like I went to check what tape was in there and it was a copy of I Hear Black. And it just, it just said overkill, I Hear Black. And I was like, what? What is this? <laughs> I guess Tim copied it for me and put it in my Walkman. Oh, that and was I nice had, of me. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> I thought so you I had like, a Walkman with an algorithm. I was way out of the curve <laughs> with that. I had the first MP3 player. You may also like. <laughs> yeah, right. No, it was, and I, I, and I was listening. I, and it's funny because I was listening to it, going, "This isn't very good. Is this like <laughs> extras or something? Or is this like really a new album?" Like, and uh, yeah. So, so even even at that, you know, I was what seventeen, sixteen, or whatever. Yeah, and then I was like, "This isn't very good." <laughs> yeah, so we knew immediately this was not a very good album. Yeah, I mean, just the way it starts off, you're like, "What? Doesn't sound good, right?" Like immediately, you're like, "Oh, what is?" Because it starts with the drums, and you're like, yeah. "Ooh, <laughs> yeah, what is that?" <laughs> yeah, it's just like someone's it's hitting like such an amateur sounding mixing. Yeah, it's like, a, yeah. it's like a demo. Yeah, yeah. It really is. I've heard demos that sound better than that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder if they, you know, they kind of went with this new style and they were like, fuck this. We're not very good at this. Let's go back to our good oh, stuff. I think yeah, it's yeah. WFO. And it was a year later, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wanted to erase was, this shit as fast as possible. I I did read that um, at the beginning of the tour that was supporting this this album, they're, this is according to this. I think this is from Wiki or something. But it says they were playing eight songs from the album live, and Whoa. the songs were quickly dropped from the set list, and none have been performed since 2002. Oh my god! Hmm. Even uh, World of Hurt. Which, I think the World of Hurt's been played. I feel like they played that one recently. Well, that may, I yeah. thought that was on that uh, that album from Germany. What was that album called? The live album. Overhausen. 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 Yeah. Overhausen. I thought it was on that. Oh, it might have been on that. This stat might be kind of older. Yeah, but could be. How many songs are on this album? It's um, like almost the entire album. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven, yeah. The um the one's not even a song, Ghost Dance. Yeah, that, that's yeah. true. So it really is only ten. Um I, I don't remember them playing a lot off this album when we saw I don't either. So I think they played yeah, maybe no. two or three. Four tops, I would I would think. Yeah, they they played Spiritual Void for sure. Yes. And mm-hmm. um, that was the video. Was it's, it's, not, it's not a good song. song. It's boring. Yeah, I think that was at nine thirty. I didn't yeah. um What's that band? Uh, uh, who opened for him? It's like, oh, I don't fucking remember. At that show, I have no idea. I don't remember. It's another New York band. What's that? Damn it. Propane? Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a... Uh, oh, wow. Now, now I'm drawing. <laughs> not, right and not Volbeat. What was three that? words. <laughs> three words. Yes, yeah, three words. It's, uh, it's like... Life uh, of Agony. Life of Agony. Life of Agony. Oh. Oh, shit. I'm cold. Oh, the same drummer, wasn't it? It's- uh, Wasn't that type of negative uh, drummer? Yeah, that was type of negative drummer. Oh, there yeah. you go. Always a connection. Yeah. Well, you said spiritual void, and that's like their. I mean, is that that's like the biggest Sabbath? Oh my god! Ever right? God, the riffs in that song are just like yeah. Like Sabbath. Riffs. Yeah. I mean, even even this, I because like spiritual void sounds like a Sabbath song. Yeah, it does. I think it's I think it's all on purpose. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, I don't know why they they thought that would be a good video. It was a st- stupid video. <laughs> it's not it's not a great song. I mean, it's a good riff. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, now it's boring. <laughs> the lyrics makes a man feel right as rain. He says, "I got two tickets to the moon in this album too." <laughs> the 
Okay, that's enough. Yeah, that's, that's, it. that's more than enough. Yeah. I mean, should we play the the good song? I mean, we mentioned it, so yeah, yeah, we yeah, yeah. This was the immediate. Oh, this song is good. Yeah, <laughs> shit. Who wrote this one? You were looking Bobby and they, they were at all of them, except for those two. They have credits on those as well. But... I would say those the, the lyrics of the chorus are a little cheesy. Some of the lyrics are cheesy, yeah. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. I'm gonna skip to the. I love the ending. The last chorus is really good. Also, two twenty two. I had as a really good part. Oh yeah. Yeah. Some proper heavy overkill. Great. Yeah. It's really good. Really good. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good song. Somehow this album is supposedly their fourth best selling album. I don't understand how that happens. Maybe people bought uh, Horoscope and then they were like, oh, man, this band is awesome. Let me get their next album. Yeah, well, wouldn't sure. that make and Horoscope like, oh. more best-selling? Because the, 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 the three that sold, sold better are the Electric Age, White Devil Armory, and The Grinding Wheel. So not Most, even like oh, Those classic. are all recent albums. Yeah. Huh. That's weird. It is. It's really, really strange. strange. Yeah. I mm-hmm. have no answer for that. Because <laughs> it wasn't like the sense. video got a ton of airplay. You know? No, no. Mm-mm. And I don't and think there was another video from this, was there? I don't think so. No, oh, World of Hurt wasn't a single. That's uh-uh. what should have been. Should have been. Should have been the single. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Not the spiritual void was the video, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <sighs> it's all they—they they included that on the live album um, in Cleveland, right? They put Spiritual Void on there, which I think they did just because they played with um, Skull Crusher. So they probably just tuned um, down. And just, you know, yeah, kept going. Yeah. I think they're back to back on that. Gotcha. But I think that's the only one they played on. I mean, they probably World of Hurt too played that on the live album. I think. Is that, uh, is that on Spotify? I oh. thought it was. I thought I'd listen to it there before. So unless they pulled it recently. I just, I haven't looked for that album in so long. It's on Apple Music. It's probably on Spotify. Yeah, if it's there, it's there. It is. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Let's see. Um, it's not on Apple. Really? Wait, is it? Is is it? it? It's not wrecking everything, is it? No. It's okay, live and over. No, no, the, no the, they, uh, that's that's not it. Oh, I thought you were talking about that album. Sorry. No, that's no, just two albums from... completely through. Let's just what feel the fire and. Oh yeah, you're right. That's right. Okay. Uh, horoscope. Yeah, you're right. I can't remember what that album's called. Is oh. it wrecking your neck? Uh that sounds right. Wrecking, wrecking your neck, yeah, I think that's. Well, I'm, I'm on their page. I can just look at this. Is. Yeah, skull crushers. Yeah, you're right. Skull crusher and then spiritual spiritual void back yeah. to back. Oh, okay. Good call. I'd forgotten about that album actually. It's, it looks like a. Oh, here it is. It's yeah. listed as an album, not a live album. Yeah. It's a good set list. 
That's good. Good Lord, what a set list. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Masturbation. Yeah. Yeah. God, the song. Oh, so good. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. Anything else on this one? Before we... Well, play play just like you. Play a little bit of that, because that, that really is Oh, that is a good riff, yeah. That, that opening, opening riff, riff is really good. Oh. Hi-hat sounds so bad. <laughs> I know. It's so loud. Go to 212 on that real quick. Okay, then. Okay, sure. Okay, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a little acoustic solo. Yeah. Sounds a little bit like a uh, negative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Maybe I ripped that off. You might have. Without knowing. It happens. <laughs> There's also that bonus track I sent you guys, that song Killogy, which is, uh, I guess yeah. that was a bonus track on the oh, Japanese version. Yet. Yeah, it's, uh, they consider it a bonus track, but it's a leftover from Horoscope. There's no way it's not. Because if, if you listen to it, it's like, no. I forgot to listen to it. The production is clearly, it's on YouTube. You can find it. I found a song called Killogy by Overkill. It says it's on the Killing Kind, but. Hmm. Is it the same thing? Let me play it. Let's Probably. See. Just, yeah. Yeah. It's it. Go by the guitar sound right there. Yeah, the drums. Wait, that riff sounds like. Sounds like something off years of day. Oh, it does. It's elimination, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it's elimination. So this is probably Sid Falk. Yeah, it is. You can tell. Yeah, it's elimination. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely better than most everything, everything on, on that. <laughs> <laughs> that was my take. Oh, this is better than everything that's on the uh, I Hear Black yeah, Album. So, sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe everyone in Japan bought it, and that's why it's sold so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this song is awesome. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I'm, I'm done with this guy. Yeah, grade. I didn't, uh, I didn't put a grade to this yet, so I, I'm, oh. I'm figuring out on the fly. Oh, that's I what didn't I minus. Did. I didn't know we were. To... I'm gonna go C minus too. I was gonna say that. That's what I was thinking also. So yeah, yeah. I'll I'll just go ahead and go A plus. Just no, no C minus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll do C minus. Well, there you go. Okay. So yeah, across like, the board. I actually, board. it. I I mean, I did listen to it a lot when it came out. Just trying. Yeah. You know, just do. Oh yeah, it. for sure. Yeah, it stayed in my Walkman for many weeks. Yeah, but yeah, I feel like I don't even listen anymore. I'm, I'm good. No, yeah, exactly. I hadn't listened to this album in its entirety in oh my god, ninety three, probably. <laughs> well, because WFO came out so quickly after it was like, yeah, oh, exactly. well, I showed it basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. erased that like, from history. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. yeah, wait till next year, Keith. Or you can go listen yeah, to it. WFO, now. WFO yeah. is great. I mean, not right now, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> So, All right, nuclear yeah. assault. Well, I mean, should we stick with New Jersey first, finish off New Jersey, and then go to New York? Wait, is that, that a negative uh, Jersey? I thought they were in New York. I, th I thought they were Bronx. 
Oh, oh. So the only New Jersey. I thought for some reason we had two New Jersey and two New York. No, I think Overkill is the only New Jersey band. Yeah, okay. Right? And never mind. Yeah. Yeah, New Jersey then loses this one pretty well-handedly. <laughs> yes, it does. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. So I mean, we can we can go on a typo negative if you want to. I don't care. I, I don't give a shit. I, I, I just I figured if we were going to try and split this into a one and two, we'd oh, do okay. one really? really bad album with one good album. You know, and <laughs> I, guess, then... <laughs> I guess we could. So yeah. Nuclear Assault, are they they're from what, Queens or the Bronx? They got to be wherever I think Anthrax is from. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. And Dan and um, Dan, Dan, didn't Dan go to high school with Scott? And yeah, Dan and yeah, Dan and, yeah. and Scott started Anthrax. So, um, while well, we're talking about it, so let's just do nuclear nuclear salt. So something uh, wicked, yeah. something wicked is the album. Yeah, um, <laughs> who's in the band? Because uh, that's the big question. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah, half, yeah. <laughs> half the band is a different lineup than the yeah, classic. Just, I won't. I won't play anything yet. We'll just talk about the band members. So John Connolly is a singer and still, uh, the, he's still the singer from all the other albums. And Glenn Evans is still the drummer. Mm-hmm. But you've got Dan DePietro on guitar and backing vocals, yeah, and P- Scott Pietro. Pietro, yeah, sorry, and Scott Mataxas. Is that how you pronounce that? I don't know. I don't know. M e maybe maybe somebody should have figured that out before uh, we recorded. <laughs> I should practice their names before we come up. Am I? Am I? Yeah, right. That know. sounds right. Mataxas. 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 Gotta do my taxes. <laughs> it's Dave DPH, DPH or not? I think you said Dan. Oh, Dave. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, Scott, my taxes. Got to do my taxes. Is on bass uh-huh. and backing vocals. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, this album was. Uh, so this it's a it's an interesting one because I was going into this thinking I was going to really hate this album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you I, no, not really. Uh-huh. I kind of like this album. I, I like this album. Yeah, pretty much a yeah lot. i i didn't this is a weird thing i did not like it in 93 mm-hmm. i liked two songs and that was it and then going back in 2023 i'm like oh this is actually pretty good yeah yeah it's weird it's i mean yeah. it's way different than anything else they've done I mean, yeah way different the last three out the last three songs are pretty they're very oh yeah nu- well nuclear salty mm-hmm. <laughs> the last uh, three songs are a, a Two total, minutes, yeah, eight seconds and thirty-eight seconds. <laughs> <Exactly>. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I guess yeah. the last, yeah, the yeah. last song doesn't really count really either because no. it's just a kind of a reprise of, of one of the other songs. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah. Um, a reprise, however you pronounce that. Yeah. Um, this is another another I think another response to the Black Album, just like the Overkill album. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I have to say. Having a different guitarist and bassist is going to drastically change your oh, overall course. outlook. Yeah. So, yeah, because Wilker, I'm sure, was a huge songwriter. Songwriter, yeah, yeah. exactly. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, there. Um, I had forgotten they had the album in '91. No, out of, out of order. order. Yeah. yeah. So uh, aptly named. Like, I think <laughs> that album was such a bad taste in my mouth that I didn't even. I don't even. I, I remember seeing a video for something wicked, wicked on. Um, Headbangers Ball, but mm-hmm. I don't even know if I had like, bought the album because it's oh. out of order. So, uh, um, right. so this was kind of this is basically like a new album for me. And uh, oh. yeah, I hadn't heard this album in many many years. Yeah, I didn't even realize um, that half the band was was different until I started. Oh really? No, I, I think I did into it. Yeah, because yeah. Um, I mean they they play they, they do a good job. You know, the leads on this album, the guitar wise, are fantastic. Yeah, like the guitar solos are really good on this album. Yeah. yeah. So, um, um, and, and I don't know if that's I'm not, I'm not trying to diss um, Vermonte, Vermonte, yeah. but um, I just like the leads are so different that I kind of immediately notice like, well, that's that's not Anthony Vermonte. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like his, I would not, I wouldn't say he's sloppy, but it's a little like this guy's like really really fancy on the stuff. He yeah. So. Yeah, and the bass tone is. Um, it, it I think it fits better, like as a sound, because mm-hmm. Dan Wilker's bass is bass tone is very in your face, you know, like D.D. Burns. Yes, true. Yeah, huh. yeah. Well, and so the what's the song? What's the ballad song? Uh, the the Forge. 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 Yeah. Is that John Connolly? Do we it's know? Gotta be. It's I think there's so. nothing in the nothing in the CDs says it's not. It's in the crazy. Liner notes. There's not anything like him. I, sound, I know. It sounds really good. 
Like, why didn't I'm you do this? It's really yeah. good. Yeah, I was like, wait a hold on. <laughs> That's got to be like the other guitar player or something. Like, that we can't got be. a weird three, four time signature. Oh, yeah. Strange feeling has come over me. A change of my mind and a change of my soul. Like, you play that for me and go, what band is this? I would have been like, oh, fucking no clue. Yeah. I've never heard <laughs> <laughs> Trickster. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds enough like him that I, I'm pretty sure it's him. Like, I mean, it, it's got to be. There's, there, there is no yeah, like, he hmm, was, maybe it's someone else. No, it definitely is him, but, you know. I guess because his regular, there he is. Like, that's the John Connolly I know, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, that nasally screaming thing he does. Yeah, you know? the high-pitched thing. So I guess I just never heard him do a lower register before. Like that. Yeah. yeah I'm so used to his good. higher screamy stuff that I wasn't I was caught off guard basically. Yeah. Before That's we get good. too deep in the, in the tracks, we should probably discuss the album cover. Oh god. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> fucking what just the for hell? the fact that it's so bad if you're on YouTube. There's the <laughs> really really bad. What the that, that might have deterred me from getting the album too. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that is uh, lame. The, in the back of the CD. The uh Ooh. Title title <laughs> track, cool. something wicked. Um, that is uh, Shakespeare, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Something wicked this way comes. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's Shakespeare, isn't it? That's uh, is it Macbeth? I think it's the beginning of Macbeth. Let's look. Were the witches? Aren't the witches talking? I at just the beginning yeah. Of that? I just learned that. What was it toil and trouble? Double double toil and trouble was from Macbeth. I never knew that. Yeah. What is it? Double what? Double Toil and Trouble. That's from Macbeth also. Double Double Toil and Trouble. I thought it was Bubble yeah. Bubble Toil and Trouble. I don't trouble. know what that is. Or Bubble Bubble. Well, I just remember there was a joke that Brian Regan told about a uh, <laughs> when you open up a uh, an ironing board and it always has to make a sound like you're like a witch is burning or something. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> double Double Toil and Trouble. <laughs> He's right. But yeah, that's from Macbeth. Is it bubble bubble boil in trouble? I was, I was oh, not that. I mean, something wicked. Yeah, I know. Oh, I've, I've, I've never heard it. Wow. Well, never heard uh, I've never seen an album well, cover where the band's name is on the album cover twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's meta. <laughs> it is. Look. And look at that font they picked. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like, like default. Yeah. Like, like aerial Microsoft font. Word. And then they changed, there's, they changed there's it on the bottom. Font. And there's Times of Roman down here, I guess. And then they had the logo over here. Like, what happened? I mean, well, the, I mean <sighs> when, when I first saw this, and I first saw this when I I got this album, what was it, Tim? Whatever three years ago? Not- <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah, about three years yeah. ago, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, so I got it there, and it's, it's hilarious. Like, I went to go listen to it again. I had actually deleted the tracks from my iPod. <laughs> right. I had to listen to this one on YouTube. But... Oh, um. Wow. One way or another, uh, you guys have never heard of the movie "Something Wicked This Way, this way Comes," because I could swear it sounds it, familiar. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it an old, familiar. it's a horror movie from uh, probably the the sixties. But I could swear it's also a there's a short story called "Something Wicked This Way Comes," which is obviously a, an allusion to Shakespeare, written by like you know one of those old school, not like Steinbeck or anything like that, but one of those that era of American author wrote stories. And that's where I think like that cover it's is it like Ray Bradbury. It might be Ray Bradbury. Yeah. Like something oh, it's uh, based off of that. It's, yes. Because what co- the, the, okay. something we could, uh, a, a kind of a, a circus comes into town Evil clown. And mm. yes. And it is like, kind of like all of a sudden it's like, Oh, kids come here and you can, you know, I always felt when I first saw the movie, I felt like, hmm, you know what? I bet, you know, Stephen King saw this and got the idea say, of a Pennywise uh, it, from yeah. this concept. Yeah. So, but when I first so saw this it. thing, I was just like, I, this looks like I bet it's from like something look at this way comes to the movie. So mm. Mm, it's, it's possible. Yeah. yeah that makes yeah. sense. Cause John's kind of a nerdy oh, look guy. At the album cover. Yeah. Like that's, there's a evil clown and yep. Yep. So. Advertising nuclear assault, which is, uh, you know, Ray Bradbury might very much, you know, <laughs> nuclear war is happening. <laughs> war in the world. I can't get over the font, though. That's hilarious. Oh, it's so, but, I mean, Make what? sure it's bold and capitalized. And... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, 
the least amount of effort possible. It's not even a logo. It's just. <laughs> I'm sure we one of a, their. We took a picture and put it in Microsoft Word. I'm sure one of their girlfriends <laughs> or friends made it or something stupid, you know, Probably, like, yeah. or their brothers, yeah. or, you know. Like, oh, I mean, this album's coming out next week. We need an album cover. Yeah. I, uh, I, I need $400 for drugs. All right, we'll pay you for it. <laughs> Wasn't there a Queensryche album that looks, was like, looked like they oh, yeah, yeah. made themselves it was, too? It was uh, Empire, I think. No, Empire, I think yeah, it was. It was, I think it was, it was Empire. Yeah, it's, it's, like big giant pixels and shit on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it was Empire, yeah. Yeah. That's right. That was the yeah. album. Yeah. yeah. It's a good album, but terrible album. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love how like I keep on seeing people like having that tattooed on them, and it's like, you know, maybe do the Operation Mind Crime symbol. <laughs> yeah, that's, there are better better selections to be made. Hey, there. Maybe if you like Queens Rig, just don't get tattoos. <laughs> There's also that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the uh, production on this is is actually pretty damn good. Yeah, it's very good. We didn't mention yeah. that Scott Gordon is the well, no, let's see, Scott Gordon is engineer who. This album. Ooh, let's see if it says on. <laughs> I can read it. Yeah, I did so much research on this album. Uh, let's see. Uh, George Marino. He mastered it. it doesn't really say. Yeah, it says really produced say. by Nuclear Assault, engineered by Scott Gordon. There you go. Mm -hmm. So, produced by the band. Did uh, um, yeah. They they worked with Alex Perialis at some point, didn't they? Yeah. Which album was that? We didn't really talk about that. I think Overkill, the first album. Though like just real quick for the overkill thing yeah i can't i still can't believe that was an alex perry also because like does not he sound misses like alex. a lot though you know but yeah because yeah, didn't he say like he just asked the band what's what they want and they're like you know we want bubble blinds okay no problem yeah we'll get it yeah, so he did under the influence something. too which was a horrible sounding album yeah mm. oh my god that album sounds real bad <laughs> so okay. maybe his experience with overkill is to make them sound like <laughs> you guys sound, want to sound like shit right did he yeah. do taking over though because that doesn't sound that bad uh, feel the fire he did feel the fire but not he did do he he did do taking over oh he did it's not listed yeah. on here yeah it's on the back hmm. this one that doesn't sound bad no that's not like great yeah. but it's better than yeah i think we we gave him um in our minds, like a higher status than he deserved because of yeah, maybe practice what you preach, probably. And well, 3D, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I don't think I don't know that, that album could sound better too. Well, I think this album sounds great. Yeah, I'm. I'm I like oh, it. The album sounds. The bass tone on that album is fucking amazing. Um, <laughs> all right, back to nuclear assault. Um, yeah, I mean, I track wise, I you guys have some. Oh, well, well, the first song is fucking I was awesome. Mention he did um, "Game Over." With that, that's the album he did for them. Oh, okay, gotcha. That's what I figured. That's the only one I see. Uh, oh, "Brain Death" the EP. Yeah, no, well, so it's an offshoot. So, right. yeah, the title right. track on this album is very good. Heavy. So, mm -hmm. Not something nuclear assault ordinarily does. They don't really do heavy. heavy yeah, it's kind of well, and groovy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see writing credits on the wiki for this album. I don't know if it's listed on the CD or not. Probably just says written by all songs written by Nuclear yeah, Assault. Nuclear Assault and Nuclear's. Man, that is heavy. Yeah. It sounds SOD ish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. A good chorus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I like that song. I don't know. I 
fine. I was going to queue up this um, Stone Temple Pilot song because Why? Uh, because the second song on this album, this Nuclear Soul album, sounds like a Stone Temple Pilot song. All right, well, that might be why I don't like the second song on this album. <laughs> so, yeah, for me, it was like, you know, the, the third one behind glass walls is just kind of boring. Like, chaos is where I felt like it's just like, all right, Forge I really dug. And then uh, I love the, like, the classical kind of interludes of uh, going on in no time. Yeah. But no the, time is the one, yeah, that, that has the, uh, yeah, this, that has the same yeah. thing. That, yeah. The album ends with this, right? Isn't it? Isn't it the same thing or no? I think so. Or no, it's the it's it's another violent end. I think is what. It, it's, yeah, it does. A, it does. Uh, you know, there's the another violent end, and then it's the other end, which goes up the bottom. Uh, oh, that's, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Duh. You know, it's funny. This sounds like um, a little bit like uh, <laughs> the Overkill song we were just talking about. Uh, Years of Decay. Oh, it does. Yeah, you're right. I'm waiting for Blitz to come in. Yeah, not, any, not anymore. Seriously, when, when I when I heard this, I'm just like, this is fucking Andy LaRock right there. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Well, that's another reason why I was like, okay, this is not, this can't be Anthony Romante. Like, yeah. No offense to him, but like, I'm actually I'm curious who wrote this. Was it the other? I mean, because John Connolly's a good lead guitar player too, actually. So yeah. he could have written this. This was uh oh, this has a very John Connolly vocal line. Right? Yeah, it does, yeah. That acoustic guitar was apparently performed by Carl Cochran. Oh. Okay. According to the liner notes of the CD. So, guest musician, apparently. Yeah. Okay then. No idea. Yep. I wonder what else he's done. I don't know. No. Yeah. I wonder if he's oh yeah no it's yeah it's listed on Wikipedia too Carl Cochran twelve string guitar on no time yeah huh. okay yeah you're right though that chorus that is so John Connolly the way he does I know <laughs> kind of get away yeah. <laughs> That's like, that's the thing, though. It's like the second balladish, ballady type song on this album. Yeah, know? it is interesting, Which is surprising. For yeah, yeah, definitely. It's not something you'd hear on a Nuclear Assault album for sure. This is uh, this must be a situation where like this was side two of the of the album because this is mm. the direct. This song follows the Forge. Oh and, really? Oh yeah, the Forge yeah. is the other. Yeah, yeah. Huh. They're both. Yeah, that's kind of weird. That is kind of like a the track. It would make sense uh, that that's side two, though, because the last yeah. two songs are, you know, 48 seconds combined. So, yeah. And this is this is track six. So it probably yeah, yeah. was uh, it's part, you know, song one on side two, which is kind of weird way to start a side two. But well, hey, especially in 93, where everything is mostly CD anyway. So. Yeah. It's just like I wouldn't. I guess people were still buying forge. tapes, but yeah. People still have tape players in their car. I know I did. Well, I mean, not in 93, but oh. the car I had when I. I didn't have a CD player in my car until like, I don't know, 2000. <laughs> yeah, 93. Yeah, I had a, I had a cassette. Yeah. yeah. Deck. That's in the Mustang, which is still there, actually. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's the same deck. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no. I had the Ford. I had the, 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 uh, stock, the stock Ford. Yeah. Yeah, that eventually broke, and I got another one. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's what I have now. Well, it's been this since like 95. <laughs> so. Well, I was going to wait for Joe to get back, but fuck it, I'm going to play it now. Immediately, I was like, holy shit. It sounds just like this. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not exactly the same. It just has that vibe. So similar. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that big, you know, kind of booming drum sound with the acoustic guitar. Which song was that? 
uh, the second song, Another Violent End. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, that sounds like another nuclear assault song too. Yeah, yeah it, it does. What song? Yeah. <laughs> it does. I was about to. This solo is really good too. Harmonies. Other than the, the other piece that sounds just like the other nuclear assault song, it's very like just straight up hard rock, not even metal. Yeah, almost, you know, like that's the yeah. you know there was acoustic guitar in the background and mm-hmm. like yeah, that's uh, again doesn't yeah I think that's why I didn't like this album very much when it first came out. So yeah, I wanted a, I wanted a proper nuclear assault album and I got this kind of mm-hmm. for sure yeah, definitely not. I mean, hey, you blame Metallica. This could be. <laughs> Actually, yeah, this is this. I think as a response to the Black Album, I think this is them like, yeah, hey, you know, so let's let's try a groovier, slower, mm-hmm. you know, more straight ahead approach. And I wouldn't, you know, you Which, guys are talking about John Connolly, you know, I mean, obviously he wasn't the guitarist writing or performing that part, but he could have easily written a lot of this stuff without Lilker and the other guy. Here, it might be John Connolly trying to. I mean, and have we looked at writing credits yet? It just says nuclear assault on all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It just says all song written. Sounds all songs written by nuclear assault. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden this is like John Connolly being like, "Hey, fuckers! All right, welcome right. to the band. Yeah, this right. is the record. I'll yeah, do it. Yeah. Oh, we'll do it nuclear assault so that we all get paid. You know? Yeah, but who knows? Well, I'll do it, and we'll do it live. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I like you're saying though the expectations were going into this were were not met. Like when we first yeah, got I mean, it, I mean, <sighs> when '93, when we when we were going to listen to this album, it's like although out of order was not. Yeah, no, out of order. I thought they might be out of order. Like that album, yeah, wasn't good. And I was like, I guess they're done. And then we, I think the video came up for something wicked. We're like, oh, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. So I got the album. And it was like, eh, I like that song before. I like something wicked and the rest, eh. but actually. Now, thirty years later, it's a pretty good album. Yeah, no, it's that's not bad. Horrible, horrible cover. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it's one of the worst. It's up there with "Hanging in the Balance" by by Metal oh Church. Oh my God, yeah, which is also which an is, album, isn't it? Or yes, is it? yeah, it is an '83 album. Yeah, which we probably won't discuss. No, probably <laughs> it's probably not. better off not discussing that I album. Know, that's one thing out of order. We didn't talk about out of order, so some albums Metal, we Metal just, Church. Yeah, yeah, Metal Church. Yeah. What, we, what are those We songs? are running out of albums. So, so. Uh, we got some biggies still. We got Souls oh, yeah, of Zero sure. and Voivod yet to go. So, oh. uh, I know. Yeah, that Voivod album might be my... Oh, gosh. That's well, so good. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but... Yeah. Like, yeah, okay. I, so, I, we were mentioning that they kind of ripped themselves off. There's this, the song To Serve Man. They directly rip off a song called Justice which is from uh, the Plague EP. So if you go to the ser- to Serve Man and go to the chorus, which is 25 seconds in, okay. just play that. Okay. What was the other song? And then this other song is Justice, which is on the Plague EP. 
and go to 41 seconds in. Same melody. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they tend to do that. I think there's yeah. like certain vocal melodies that John Connolly has that he sticks with, like that. Mm -hmm. No time, gotta get away. Gotta get away. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of like he's kind of like the uh, the thrash version of David Dryman or whatever that guy's name is. David from, uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, from Disturbed <laughs> or Fred Durst <laughs> or Fred Durst. Yeah, <laughs> I was not, not to not to go off a tangent too much, but I don't know. I'm sure you've seen Brad Divins has been doing sound for. Disturbed, yeah, disturbed yeah and he posted a clip the other day and it was that one song that we always make fun of where the singer is like whatever you know but as soon as i hit play and i hear that i'm like oh my god it's that song but there it, is. it could have been any song i guess by disturbed yeah because... oh, my <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i suck but hey, uh, good for Brad Divins for yeah, he's making money. That's a, that's a yeah. big that's a big band to do sound yeah. for. So it's pretty awesome. They're pretty huge. I mean, he's done sound for en Enrique Iglesias, which so you know, yeah, that guy's huge too. Just yeah, different parts of the world. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, any other songs? Before I, 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 I the same that same song. I thought um, the one that I was just talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it, the opening riff's very Motorhead ish. Okay. To serve man. Yeah. Oops. Oh, yeah, big time. For sure. Yeah. Even the bass. Yeah. It's like super Motorhead y. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just put Lemmy in there. Yeah. For it would sure. work just fine. Mm hmm. That's we were about cool. to grade this, Joe. All right. <laughs> You're back just in time. <laughs> do you have any notes on it? Yeah, did you, you were... have any other things? Yeah. Any other I think he just did. Anyway, he, what, he, what he just did yeah. was his uh, opinions. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Maybe while you were pooping, you took some notes. <laughs> <laughs> Something wicked came out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Something wicked that way came. <laughs> <laughs> then a big brown shark came. <laughs> <laughs> um, stuck in the water. <laughs> so, okay, we'll, we'll do another. I'm going to do a tangent here because I was thinking about something. Keith, when you used to go to like Tower Records oh, yeah. in high school, oh yeah, what would what was? Am, am I am I right in remembering that you said you would always have to go poop? Oh my so, god! No, no, no! That's, that's a Every single time you go into a record store, it's too, it wouldn't. You have to poop. I'd have to pee, and it would just be oh, like I all of a sudden. I, I, oh, okay. I'd just be doing the 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 the, the dance, you know, like the oh, dance, yeah. and you know, uh -huh. you're like, oh, now I have to buy something and do it fast as fucking possible to like, you know, run to McDonald's <laughs> or something to, you know. Well, I I was thinking about that because, um, and this I know is gross, but for a lot of people, but probably not our audience. Um, <laughs> Because I, I go to get, I go see bands now, and I, I have to go poop every time. <laughs> like the last four shows, it and I didn't in Pittsburgh, luckily. Oh probably, man! Oh, that was rough in those. Disaster, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's outdoor, and mm. I mean, they were fancy porta johns, but they were yeah. still porta johns. Mm, yeah, but yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know where it is. We went to the Mister Bungle. Luckily, we stopped and got some food first because I had to use their bathroom. I was, I just yeah. I get I, I don't know if I get excited or, or what's going on or just <laughs> yeah I that's my new time it's now a, I don't know but your, body's, your body gets yeah. comfortable it's like oh <laughs> have, I'm happy yeah. this is my happy place <laughs> yeah so maybe it applies to the podcast too now oh <laughs> boy it might it might <laughs> oh, any anything great. music related apparently <laughs> I guess yeah um okay so back to the grading where where do you go I'll, I'll Tim oh man. Get <laughs> It's contagious. It's contagious. <laughs> kitty cat wanted to get out. Oh, the kitty cat needed poop. to poop. <laughs> oh, yeah, she yeah. she might. It's quite possible. Do you have the uh, litter box that like sends you messages? No. No. Oh. Ours is pretty old. Seen that school. old TV? Seen that ad? No. Yeah, I have. Yeah, it does yeah. isn't uh, the girl from the office? I don't. I don't need oh. my litter box sending me messages. Oh yeah, I think so. I think I 
I know to check it every morning just to scoop it. So this one like tells it scoops you, itself. You never need to you scoop again. Doing everything. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Those are probably a thousand dollars too. <laughs> so in like five years, you can afford one. That's right. Coming down in price. Yeah. Um, we want to grade it. I'm gonna give this a B plus actually. That was a B minus for me. Yeah, B minus. I'm gonna say C. Okay. Okay. I mean. You know, it's, it's okay. not. It's a lot better as than good I as it was going to be. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not. You know, it's not as good as you know. Uh, it's Hammer not as good or... as everything else I listened to from that band. <laughs> so, well, everything mm. after this, because they put out a couple of things after this, and they they weren't good. All right. Yeah, we didn't mention that this was their last album until like twenty put one out in twelve or something like that, right? Two thousand five. They put out Third World Genocide, and that album sucks. <laughs> Was it, it the is, original? Was it like Bermonte and Dan Loker? Well, and yeah. Bermonte was not it, but everybody everybody else was. Oh, oh Loker was okay. on that. Loker's on it too. Yeah. So I had high hopes. It took a long time for it to come out. Like they were talking, they were talking about it for years. Wow. And it was like 2005. I was like, yes, it's finally out. And I bought it, put it on. I was like, this sucks. <laughs> wow. It sounds horrible. The songs aren't good. Uh, it's nice. not good. And then 2015, there's an EP called Pounder. Oh, I remember that. Not. Yeah, I remember it's not good. good. Better than Third World Genocide, but it's only four songs. And it's just, it's not anything you really want to go back to. It's yeah. kind of generic. Well, I want to hear some of that now. Genocide. What, Third World Genocide? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I dare you. Knock yourself out. Where the fuck? Chipple dog dare you. I'll play some of it. Uh, let's play Human Wreckage. I don't know what. Ooh, it immediately sounds like poop. Yeah, it's not This is what Joe was terrible. doing 20 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they got horrible song titles in this album, too. Is he in the bathroom? It sounds awful. Wine and cheese, but they spell it like whining. That's enough of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oof. It seems Ooh, as though like okay. he's singing in a lower range, and I don't like it as much as his normal you know no it's terrible hang the they cover the hockey song oh I, I, I might want to hear that track 10 i just i just clicked away from it give me a second <laughs> these fuckers are probably rangers fans <laughs> we should have maybe played some of that poetic justice song you know on on oh the yeah 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 i mean that's the old <laughs> That's the hockey song. Okay. Might have been the best song on the album. Probably. <laughs> oh, Poetic Justice. Yeah, we should play some of that. That's old school yeah. nuclear assault right there. I never read the I just now yeah. I'm realizing it's, what he's saying. It's like um, Sound of Music. Well, like, no, I get that. I'm saying the, the mother, mother Goose was never here. Father Christmas was a drunk. Easter Bunny, well done, tasted good. Peter Pan hung out with fairies. Tinker Bell got blown away. Mary Poppins OD'd on Quaaludes. I didn't yeah. know he was saying all that. <laughs> I yeah, I got the Mary Poppins like thing. But I just didn't understand the, the chorus. No, because he's singing it like my God, sound of music, not Mary Poppins. Oh, sorry, sound of music. Yeah. yeah do re mi fa so la ti do. Sorry, I was looking at Mother Goose and thinking of Mother something else. I don't know. Mary Poppins. Mother Jugs. <laughs> yeah, really. The the last. Well, I shouldn't. I mean, we talked about this before, but the last three songs are just. <laughs> you can play art. <laughs> uh, art is like yeah. 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 <laughs> let's let's dive into that one. Let's really like <laughs> see I'm fuck you, man. The, that is that is that is if I could have an album of that of, of four hundred of that song, you know, <laughs> that is perfect. That's yeah, like well, the, that's a lot yeah, of punk rock. The first album they have a bunch of that yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 
and then it ends with or the SOD callback. Yeah, or SOD, yeah. Or MOD. Or MOD, yeah. Oh, did you uh mention that something wicked is actually in the film It from 2017? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, that's right. The song, the song, something wicked, isn't it? And I, I saw that movie, and I don't remember the scene at all. No, they, I remember Anthrax being in it. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh man, when when, when, they, they played... when the Anthrax finally got played in the goddamn Stephen King movie, I was like, "Fuck!" I mean, I had mean, yeah. the mess of <laughs> finally. Like, right. Yeah. I wore my Anthrax shirt to that when when I went to the movie, knowing they were in it. I'm I had to wear my Anthrax shirt. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Did they see you? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They, the they, they were in. Uh, where did I see that? Uh, what is it? Woodbridge. Yes, yes. The Anthrax was in Woodbridge. Then. <laughs> yeah, so the Alamo at Woodbridge. Hmm? Was it the Alamo? Yes, yeah. that's exactly where I went. Good man. Good man. Yeah. Was gonna you go really to typically don't want to be in Woodbridge. No, Woodbridge. Hoodbridge. Hoodbridge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're moving on to. Bloody kisses. Bloody yes, kisses. I believe we are. Are, are. are we? Are we? Is this two parter? Yeah, we'll just do the whole thing and I'll. Okay, I was gonna say we could do you know like what have you been up to lately and do it or cool things we're into because I've had a few cool things to like to bring up. But <laughs> if you want to now, sure, why not? Well, uh, uh, one way or another, I just finished a book called Midnight in Chernobyl, a uh, book I picked up when I was on vacation down in. Uh, South Carolina with my brother and goes to, into the worst or maybe the second worst, considering what happened in Japan, but uh, one of the worst nuclear disasters that ever occurred in the world and really outlines the failure of the Soviet structure. If anybody remembers what the USSR was, uh, it, it is a, I just enjoyed it thoroughly. If anybody is interested in uh, or has ever seen mentioned- the churn- mentioned the author, sir. Oh, uh, written by Adam Higginbotham. But if anybody's like, I saw the uh, the HBO the special show, on uh, mm-hmm. uh, Chernobyl, and it yeah, was yeah. so well done, and it's brilliant. And really, once you really read into more of what goes on, of course, you know one of the characters mm-hmm. in that you know series was completely made up. They had to kind of combine different people into what she did. Uh, but one way or another, that you know, when you really, I mean, also, you know, the primary character of that, uh, uh, Akademician Lagosov, uh, he really wasn't like the most important. I mean, he was very important, but you know, there were definitely other other people involved in the absolute catastrophe and in the decision making to clean up. That uh, you know maybe could have given a little more um, you know head nods in, in, in the series. You know he was really mm-hmm. kind of decided you know hey we got to come up with one guy that's going to be the, uh, the the protagonist and they decide on Lagasov. But uh, there are some other guys and you know I can't pronounce names because holy yeah. holy shit man. <laughs> that's, but, a, that's that's an issue with reading Russian. Yeah. No, Brothers just, Karabatsov. No. Brothers Karabatsov. I I've tried twice, and I just can't remember which who's who because I can't place who the fucking names are. I've been trying <laughs> to. I, I started. Uh, fuck, what's it? I think it's right here. Actually, I, I almost bought that book that you had, Keith, uh, a few months back. Really? Yeah. I well, you can borrow mine. Yeah. Anyway, thanks. What the fuck is that book called? Um, I don't miss that. Well, anyway, I was just gonna say, like, yeah, it's frustrating to try to read anything that has to do with a lot of Russian characters, yeah. um, for that very reason. Like, you can't, you can't quickly say the names in your head. Yeah. yeah. But hey, I mean, Dostoevsky, you know, I read anything right, by him. That's but... it. What's his What's his famous Crime and Punishment? punishment. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I started reading that. Oh yeah, a few months back, and I was that like, is fucking... these fucking names, <laughs> like, Jesus. It's 20 minutes to get through one page if they mention more than three people. Yeah. <laughs> this will this will show you uh the, the I guess I was gonna say like level of education, but maybe it's more like what I'm into more than you guys. But I have the same problem when I read Star Wars books. Oh <laughs> I bet. Especially if you go to Kashyyyk. 
<laughs> well, that uh, the High Republic books are notorious for that. Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm. I was reading the most recent High Republic while listening to it, really, which because I I started to read you it. Don't like, even read it. You actually. Oh. Well, I started to read, and I was like, I, I, don't, I can't even pronounce these names, so I had to start listening to the audiobook so I could actually they could read it to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then and then keeping track of who's who because it's almost yeah, like yeah, they Thrones. switch back they'll, and forth. They'll just, yeah. yeah, and you're like, who is this again? Yeah, where yeah. where are they again? I don't. Even know I struggle with that on. too. Yeah. I'd look up, like look names up like who is this again? Oh, okay, that's the yeah. He's a pot of one. All right, all right, cool. Yeah, sorry. You're not the only person who's complained about that. That's that's pretty common among like Star Wars fandom. Actually, okay. people, like good lord, too many characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many names to keep track of, and they're weird names. So, well, I mean, you do know <laughs> there, there's an old game that you know, used to play on this website, this uh, pot, this uh, message board, and it was you know Star Wars character. Oh, you know, yeah, well, it was. You know, we had this game. It was Star Wars character or hockey player. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. I was, there was this um, TikTok where this guy was like reading Star Wars books or, or listening to Star Wars audiobooks or whatever. And he was like doing all these weird names like, go to, you know, you must find Plantine. Go to the planet Flatouf. And the last one was, you must find Tom Holland. He'll be on the planet Zendaya. <laughs> Tom Holland. <laughs> <laughs> <Anyway. laughs> well, I actually uh, I continued reading the, the you know the Star Wars book we were talking about. We we're talking about *Heir of the Empire*. Mm, yeah, I yeah. listened. I was the odd that the sequel was uh, *Dark Force Rising*. Oh so yeah, I, so I'll listen to the audiobook version of this. It was the same guy that did the narration. No. Yeah, no. Timothy's on. Oh, oh, oh wait, who did the well, narration? It, no, I'm saying that the same guy who who read the audiobook, who read *Out of the Empire*, read this one as well. So it was the same. Hick, the Hick Lando's here. <laughs> the hey, so in buddy, this one, you want to yeah, play some sabak? sabak. <laughs> so in this one. I guess Akbar didn't talk in Heir to the Empire at all, but he does in this one. Oh boy. Sounds just like Doc Brown. Like exactly like Doc Brown. <laughs> Back to the future. <laughs> Marty <Martin> Scott. <laughs> yeah. There's a trap. Here's a, here's a trap. <laughs> this damn thing doesn't work at all. <laughs> I was like, oh man, now you got Redneck Lando and Doc Brown Akbar. <laughs> but I soldiered through it. It's a good story. Nonetheless. Wait, Akbar the Admiral? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The trap but, guy. But we know what he sounds like too, so. I know. Well, we knew what Lando sounded like too. Well, yeah, yeah. Just I guess that makes sense. He's not he's getting anything right. I, I'd sure. Although, no, I don't know if I'd want to hear I don't know if I'd want to hear the original Akbar's talking either. Too much of a book. I don't know if I would be able to handle <laughs> that voice doing like an entire Timothy yeah. Zahn book. <laughs> Tim, and oh, wait, so Tim and I we always loved how Akbar, whenever he began to talk, he would. Yeah, he's always like, like if, you, if you watch Return of the Jedi, and he's giving that big speech. He's like, yeah, before he, he these, talks. Yeah, these big breaths, which so no one ever talks about, but it's like, <laughs> that's a trap. <laughs> all those, high, I, I never finished that High Republic book, and I'll have all these comics that come after that book. I literally have. I'm gonna spill something or knock something over if I do this, but like, holy shit! All of these come after that book, and I haven't even opened them because I haven't finished reading that book. Yeah, well, are we talking <laughs> like about Heir to the Empire? Comics. And uh, okay, but but okay, no, these this is this is High Republic okay. stuff, so All it's right. like it's, more modern. It's, yeah, it's um, they're more recent books and comics, but they take place like 200 years before. Uh, a new hope. So it's it's not quite as far back as the. I love I love how this entire conversation started with me going off on you know a very know. intellectual. Well, it turned into, it always you know, turned into Star Wars. Thing, you know? me and Tim. <laughs> Everything becomes Star Wars. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm knocking everything over on my shelf now because I took those fucking comics out. So. <laughs> Maybe you should read them. I probably should. I probably should just go to YouTube and watch a like a summary of that. <laughs> because I'm never going to finish that audiobook at this point. So I mean, that first High Republic book is really good. It's just, yeah, there's a lot of characters. To... Well, here's one yeah, quick thing, like... considering I read Heir to the Empire and uh, Shadow of the Republic probably in 1993, maybe 91. And wasn't there a one that came after that, too? 
Yeah, Dark Force Rising was a sequel, oh. and there's also Last Command, which is what I'm listening to now because I finished Dark Force right, yeah. Rising, which I think was like 94, 95. I don't think I ever read the third book there, so I. No, it's good. Okay. Mm. I mean, yeah. whole thing. You might, I mean, it's a trilogy. You yeah. might as well finish it up. Well, the reason yeah. I was... It's been... I mean, seriously, it's been 30 <laughs> fucking years since... Well, I've... start back over. Yeah, it's it's a quick, it's a pretty quick read. It's, you know, it's a pretty straightforward story, so... Well, I knew Thrawn was going to be in... I mean, Thrawn's been in Rebels, but I knew that that was going to be, like, a focal point of Ahsoka, so I wanted to see yeah. if there was any... Like, if they were going to take anything from the books from Timothy Zahn and put it into this new Ahsoka series, you know what I mean? I so, was really that's... hoping that we were going to see more of the Timothy Zahn stuff in any. Yeah, it yeah. would have been cool. Um, but you know. Yeah, they did. I mean, in Rebels, they did a little bit of it, and I think they're going to do more in, in Ahsoka. They're starting to, you know. Yeah, I mean, they, they show that his, like, the style of the kind of the ways uh, uh, Thrawn thinks. Thrawn. Like, very yeah. psychological and, like, digs into the whole history of things and all that kind of stuff, so. Learn about their art. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else, Keith, that you have? I have no, no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Nerd stuff. <laughs> yes, very much so. Energy. Energy. It's aggression. Power. To sum what? it up, it's a um, vulgar display of power. Sometimes I think you drink just a little too much blood. I'm sorry, I'm going to be a bloodaholic, but I'm a Good note. Cutting it up big time. They are miserable slaves of Satan. Look out! Some country called him. Face yourself, or you have to be in the presence of evil. You're fucked!